You guys, we're draping another silk dress, but this one's going to be strapless. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Tracy, and I have a passion for upcycling clothing, and I teach sewing on here. Materials needed for this project are two and a half yards of silk charm mousse. You can also just use like a poly charm mousse instead of silk, because I know it's expensive to just do the prototype in silk. Just keep in mind that silk is a natural fiber, so it just drapes differently than poly does. And of course, some scissors, style tape to mark your lines on your dress form, and some pins, and a a water soluble marker to mark your drape. For the pattern supplies, you need some pattern paper, a straight edge, and a ship curve, a pencil, and a tracing wheel, a quarter inch elastic for the sleeve, just so you can see what it looks like when it's all gathered. All of the supplies and materials, I will link them down below. I can't wait to get into the draping tutorial for this silk strapless dress. Before we start draping this dress, you want to just map out your style line. So I just start at the center front of the neckline and just i'm just doing like a sweetheart shape so i'm just kind of like pinning at the center front and just going like slightly over the bust when i get to the side i just like straighten it out all the way to the back i want a under bust seam at the front of the dress so i'm just placing some style tape an inch below the neckline at the center front and then just bringing it down below the bust and all the way to the side and i just pin it in place for the back, I'm just taking more style tape and placing some at the side seam right at the waistline and then just bringing it up towards the center back and I'm kind of curving it because I kind of want like a oval shape at the back because I'm going to have a cowl neck at the center back. Because this dress is strapless, it's going to need some sort of structure. So I decided to make the back like a corset back and the side seam and back panel pieces are going to be boned and I'm going to add grommets so you can get in and out of this dress as easily as possible. I start by just taking some style tape so I can have like two panels at the center back to give it more shape and I'm just placing that line from the princess seam at the center back and next I'm just taking another piece of style tape and I measure about an inch away from the center back and then an inch and a half from the center back on the waistline and then I just connect those two with the style tape. You need room for the lace up back and with a corset you always end up cinching in your waist measurement about two inches smaller. That is the new center back line and I'm kind of measuring to see how much room I have in this center back panel and I don't have much for bone grommets and bones so I'm just kind of shifting that seam a little bit over just so my two back panels are more even. I'm taking my 100% silk charm mousse and it's like 16 mummy is the weight of it and I'm just like slashing and tearing and having like two 35 by 35 squares and you want to just fold those diagonally and mark the bias and thread trace it so if you need a full in-depth tutorial on how to thread trace your bias and find your bias you can watch my previous video i have linked to the clip and the video right here we can finally start draping with our silk so just take one of the squares and just pin that bias line we thread traced and pin it at the center front make sure you have enough fabric at the sides if not just slightly bring it up i had to bring my fabric up like above the neck and just pin the sides up and out of the way so you can just grab your scissors and just trim the excess right above the underbust seam after removing that excess just pin that center front in place at the front neckline and you're only pinning until you get to the underbust seam and you're going to take your scissors and slash until you reach that seam and this will just make the fabric like smooth and start molding around that bust. And after removing that tension, take some more pins and just pin down that bias line right on the center front line of your dress form until you can't pin anymore. I only drape on the left side of my dress form so I'm just taking that left side and just kind of smoothing and molding to the body so I start at the center front and like drag my fingers towards the waist at the side and I place a pin and I'm just kind of like molding because I want the dress to be very form-fitting around the torso and the waist. At the underbust seam you can see there's a lot of tension so just grab your scissors and just start slashing to relieve that tension and just trim away that excess fabric because it gets in the way while you're pinning and working. Just keep slashing and pinning until you get the desired shape right under your bust so I'm just kind of repeating this all the way until I reach the side seam of this drape. 
I'm just like smoothing and just pinning this fabric at the side and just keep placing pins. And when I reach the hips, I don't want it to be completely smooth. So I'm kind of leaving those two flares because I like how it looks to be a little flared at the bottom. And I'm just taking my scissors and cutting away this excess fabric at the side so it's easier to start molding the side seam. And there's still some tension at the under bust. So I'm just cutting away that excess fabric and then I'm just taking my scissors and slashing a bit more. Silk is very tedious, so you're just repeating this a lot and just placing pins, and you can see that when you slash, you release a lot of the tension everywhere. And now to do the same thing to the side seam, you're just gonna slash to relieve a lot of that tension out of the way, and you can see when you slash, it just like breathes. That's what I like to say. You let like the fabric breathe and like mold to the body. And just place pins along the rest of the side seam to keep the silk in place so nothing shifts before you start marking it. And like I said, I kept those flares towards the hip area just because I wanted it to be a little bit more flowy towards the bottom than like a full on just tight fitting slip. Love the way this drape is fitting, so I'm just taking my water soluble marker and just marking that under bust, the side seam, and just marking the waistline as well. And I will link a water soluble marker down below just so you guys can purchase it as well if you don't have one. I definitely recommend using these. It's a lot easier to see versus like chalk, which like can rub off. Once everything is marked on your drape, you can just unpin it and just take it off the dress form and we can move on to the next piece. For the back drape, you're gonna take that 35 inch square and have it thread traced again. And you're gonna just take that corner with the thread trace and just fold it down 16 inches and just line up that bias line. And on the folded edge, you can see it's a perfect roll. So that is your cross bias. And you're just gonna place pins to like hold those two layers together and then i recommend just like dotting with your water soluble marker that like fold right on the fold so you know where that cowl is going to have to sit when you drape it at the back and now you can just take that fabric and just bring it to your dress form and that part we folded on the inside is going to be the inside of the back piece this is going to have like a low back cowl drape so you're going to just take that piece and just kind of measure the hip so you want to be able to just like slip into this dress so you need to have at least like a quarter of your hip measurement on either side of that line that is basted at the center back so after having measured nine inches from each side of that basted line you're going to just pin right at the waist and that is where it's going to sit I personally don't like having any closures in silk dresses just because I don't think zippers look really good with silk. It just, it's so harsh on such a delicate fabric. And um, you can also just drape this like normally and just have like a low back or have like a fully covered back. You'll just have to add a zipper or covered buttons. I recommend doing like loops and buttons. And I'm just adjusting the cowl drape at the back and then I'm just kind of removing the pins from that piece we folded underneath because it's going to act as the facing. I'll show you how to cut it and pattern it later. And you're just unpinning just to relieve some of the tension and just pin that bias line at the center back. And then I'm just kind of like molding it to the side seam. And I also want some flares so when I get to the hip I'm just kind of letting the fabric fall where it wants to so it can have these like slight flares at the back. After putting that side seam in place, I'm just taking my scissors and removing that excess fabric at the side and I'm just doing the slash and pin method just to release all of that tension. Okay. 
the back cowl is sitting perfectly where I want it and I just love how everything's falling so I'm just taking the water soluble marker and just marking that side seam all the way down and this piece is a lot simpler than the other pieces of this dress and you can just proceed to remove it off the dress form and you're going to cut out an 18 inch square for the bust drape and you're just going to take the corner with that bias line thread trace and just fold it down about 10 inches and just pin it in place. You're kind of repeating what we did with the back piece. So you want to just pin it in place and then take your marker and mark that cross bias line so we can get like that cowl right on the neckline. And I'm adding a sleeve to this dress so I kind of need to change the neckline a bit. I'm just removing the style tape and when I get to the side seam I'm just bringing it up all the way towards the armhole as you can see so I'm just bringing it up slightly towards the armhole because that is where I'm going to attach the sleeve. So I'm just placing a pin there and then I'm bringing the style tape back up in the back because it's a little bit too low in the back. And I want this gathered effect at the front of the dress so I'm just taking the style tape and like kind of bringing it down so it's plunged to where I want it to be gathered until at the very front. So we're going to be draping a cowl like neck so um the fabric can stretch over and like mold to the bus versus like adding a dart or gathers i'm taking that 18 inch square and either side of the center front i marked seven inches and i'm just pinning that at the very end of that style tape right under the underarm and you can see it's slightly cowling we don't want a dramatic cowl because we want it to like cover the bust and be like slightly fitted there so it doesn't like flash or anything when you're wearing this dress and I just start by taking pins and pinning down that center front on the center front of the dress form so right right onto that under bust seam and then I'm just placing pins and just like smoothing to the side and when I get to the side seam I'm just pinning the fabric in place and removing that excess and I'm just kind of smoothing everything out and now I just need to cut away some excess fabric at the bottom so just cut some more and then when you get to the center front you can just start slashing up towards that underbust seam and then you can just start smoothing and pinning right at the underbust because you want the underbust seam to be as smooth as possible and you can see you're going to get this like gathered effect at the top with all that excess fabric above that seam so just start pinning and just start slashing and smoothing more Once satisfied, just take your marker and mark that underbust seam and center front and that side seam. Don't forget about the armhole, so just mark it. It's going to end up becoming a dart, but you need to just mark that to know where it starts and stops. And now you can just remove it off the dress form and just grab some other pieces. We're going to just start draping the back panels. Mark an inch away from that selvage edge on your silk so you know where your straight grain is and line up that line with your side seam on your dress form and just put it in place. Move the rest of the fabric to the other side of the panel and then just place pins right along that seam and after doing that you're just going to take your scissors and just start cutting away that excess and slashing to mold this piece to that panel. And just mark around that panel and just remove it off the dress form. You can just grab another piece and do the same thing. Mark a one inch line from the selvage. Pin it along that center back line we established and then you're just going to do the same thing. You're just pinning it in place and then just smoothing and molding it to that back panel and just marking it and slashing and just making sure everything fits. I feel like I've repeated so much but um, um, you get the point. And it's time to just transfer everything to paper now. So I'm just taking my ruler and dropping a line and just dropping another line further away from that piece of paper, just so it's big enough to like pattern out both of these back pieces. So I'm just laying 
one of the pieces down and I'm just lining up that straight grain line we marked with that straight line on the paper and that's going to be the side seam. So I'm just pinning it in place so nothing moves and I'm adding this box of pins on there just so it weighs it down and I'm just taking the tracing wheel and just tracing all over those lines that we marked. Just remove the piece and take your pencil and mark that side seam so you know that that's the side and you're just taking the pencil and slightly dashing the shape of that pattern. We'll go back in with the ruler to perfect those lines and you're just going to repeat this exact step to the back piece. So line up that straight grain to that straight line on the paper and that's going to be your center back. Go in with your straight edge and your curved ruler and just perfect all of those lines and add a half inch seam allowance around those patterns. I forgot to do it at the center back, so do it everywhere. To pattern the front bust piece, just take a piece of paper that's about 20 by 20 inches long and then just drop a straight line right down the middle. And at the midpoint, you're gonna drop another straight line right across and just grab the drape and just unpin that piece from each other so you're just gonna like open it up and then you're just gonna start pinning that thread traced line right on the vertical line on this piece of paper so just pin right where the horizontal and the vertical axis hit in the middle so I'm just marking that on the drape and then I'm pinning that at the center point on that piece of paper and I'm just pinning both axes in place, so the dotted line on the horizontal line and the thread traced on the vertical, so just pin that all in place. I'm just weighing this piece down with my pin box. I should probably just buy some fabric weights. I'm taking the tracing wheel and just tracing that side seam all the way up till I get to that horizontal line. And then don't forget to just mark that underarm, which is that like line we made that's going to act as a dart. And then just mark the underbust seam. Removing the drape and just taking my ship curve and just marking this pattern and perfecting all of the lines. And just mark your dart. So take your straight edge and mark the bottom of the dart and the top of the dart. the fun part we need to reflect this piece so you're just going to fold across the horizontal line first and just fold right on that line and then you're just going to fold again on that vertical line so it's going to be into like four equal parts and you're just going to have the piece that you marked facing up I'm taking my ruler and just adding half inch seam allowance around the side seam and at the bottom of the underbust and just take a weight to weigh your piece down and your rotary cutter just cut it out on the seam allowance and then just take your tracing wheel to trace that dart so it transfers to all mirrored images and you just end up with one big piece that's going to be cut on the bias and taking the straight edge i'm just marking the dart and adding the seam allowance on either side of the pattern and the portion above the horizontal axis is actually the facing, which is also the lining. So your piece will be fully lined and it'll look really nice when it's gathered at the center. For the back towel drape, you need a piece of paper that's like 30 by 30 inches long and you wanna drop a straight line down for the bias line. And then about like seven inches below the top of that piece of paper, you're going to drop another line that is perpendicular to that line. Anything above that will be the facing, so just grab your drape and just unpin that towel and just place your drape right onto that center line, so match up that basted line with that bias line. And you want to just find that intersection between the basted line and that dotted line we made. So just find the intersection and just pin it to that piece of paper. So it's just smooth out that drape and just pin that bias line and the cowl line down. Weigh the drape down and just grab the tracing wheel and trace that side seam. You can just remove the drape and just draw in that side seam. And if you want your dress to be longer, mine is going to be about like above the knee. You can just extend that line straight down until you've reached your desired length. Right above the cowl line, you just want to mark 5 inches, that's going to be the length of your facing, and just square off a line. 
taking my ship curve i'm perfecting that side seam and i'm taking my straight edge ruler and just adding a half inch seam allowance to that side seam and then i'm deciding how long i want to make this dress like i said i made it about like above the knee so i measured from the top of that cowl line down 21 inches and i just did that all around the bottom of that back skirt I drew in that hemline and now I'm just folding right on that cowl line. So just folding that and then I'm going to just trace the side seam so I can get the exact shape for my facing. And I'm just penciling in that facing line and now we can just fold right along that bias line so we can get the mirrored image of the entire back piece for the back of the dress. I take the rotary cutter and just cut around the facing side seam and the hem and you have your back piece. Finally, the last pattern piece, which is the front piece of this dress. So you're just going to need another 30 by 30 piece of paper and you want to just drop a straight line down the middle. So that's going to be where you line up the bias smooth it out and just pin that bias in place next just take the tracing wheel and just trace that under bust seam and side seam and don't forget to trace in the waistline remove the drape and just draw in your side seam draw in your under bust and just perfect all of your lines next you want to just take your measuring tape and from that dotted waistline we dotted on the paper you want to measure 21 inches all the way around the front of the dress draw in the hemline and you're only going to add half an inch seam allowance to the side seam and the under bust after adding the seam allowance just fold it on the bias line and cut out one front piece i lied about that being the last pattern piece it's actually the little like off the shoulder puff sleeve. Measure your bicep, mine measured 10 inches and multiply that by two and a half. So I ended up with a 25 inch by four and a half inch rectangle. And I'm just taking the pattern and just cutting out one rectangle and then I'm just gonna fold up a half inch at the top and the bottom and just do a straight stitch so I can have tunnels to feed the elastic. 10 inch pieces and I just tack it at the end and the other end so it gathers like this and I have a perfect cuff for my sleeve and with the drape I just fold it on the bias and like cut out with a half inch seam allowance so I can like see what it's going to look like it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just a drape but I wanted to visualize how it would look on the form to make the final dress out of this gorgeous desert rose color and show you guys how to sew it together and i will also have the pattern available in multiple sizes on my etsy shop next week don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll see you guys next week